Nate Streeter again, uh, Paperboy Printing and Distribution. Uh, I apologize about the glare on my glasses. Unfortunately, I've got two 22-inch monitors here that I usually use, and uh, even on their lowest setting for brightness, they put off a lot. So sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you can still see me and, and understand what I'm saying. I wanted to talk about response rate today. That's a question we get a lot. It's obviously highly important. The reason that we've seen so much growth over the last two years is that we've been able to bring an incredible level of return on investment for our customers. And the bottom line is return on investment is either calls or new customers coming into their retail location, uh, but it's bringing them new business. That's what we're in the business to do is bring you new business. Um, I wanted to give you a couple case studies and so you could see uh, and get some examples. Quite honestly, I would be very leery of uh, the advertising rep that you talk to that's going to give percentages, kind of just percentages across the board for any business. You know, what we've seen over the years, there's such a diversity uh, among businesses and, and what kind of response rates is that they should get. And there's so many other factors, too. I'll give you a couple examples quick about different factors. For instance, location. Um, you may have a fantastic location. In fact, your location may be so good uh, that you need very little marketing. Your location, in a sense, is part of your marketing budget. You're paying extra rent uh, to have that fantastic location, and because of that, you need very little. I have customers that are in exactly the opposite situation. They have a, a strip mall that's kind of off the beaten path, and they need a higher level of marketing. And so, in a sense, because they have discounted rent there, what they're able to do is maybe spend a thousand, two thousand dollars more than normal a month on marketing, and sort of make up that difference. Um, the other thing is how long have you been in business? Obviously someone who's been uh, in business for a long time may not be, need very much marketing, whereas obviously if you're a grand opening uh, and no one's ever heard of you, you may spend quite a bit of money to, return, uh, to, to gain new customers, which kind of leads me into are you part of a franchise? Uh, your franchise may be spending money on marketing and your marketing may just be coinciding with what they're already doing. Um, so all those different factors make a big difference. Let me give you a couple examples with some real numbers so you can kind of understand what we're doing for our customers. We did a drop for uh, Fantastic Sam's. We do lots of different business with lots of franchises. Um, back in the fall of 2009, uh, 10,000 homes that we delivered to, they uh, saw 509 coupons come in, which was fantastic, with 111 new clients. So huge amount of return on investment, lots of new customers for them. Let me give you another example, uh, a landscape company. Uh, we did 5,000 flyers for them. Um, it looks like they got 32 calls and they were able to attribute $7,000 worth of business um, to that flyer drop that we did. Um, both those first examples, hair and uh, landscape, both have huge amounts uh, of uh, uh, lifetime value for customers, so lots of repeat. Obviously, people have to continue to get their hair cut, and people continue to get their lawns mowed and, and uh, fixed up. So another factor is what is the lifetime value of a customer? You know, they may only spend $20 with you the first time they come in to get the hair cut, but if they come in 10 more times um, on average, then that, that customer is worth $200 to you. Let me give you another example, an interesting one here. We did uh, for a church just a few weeks ago, um, and they saw 46 new people come in. We did 20,000 pieces for them. They saw 46 new people come in. Um, their average cost was about $75 a person. Interesting that they had a direct comparison to another church start that had started not long before who had actually done a direct mailing instead of a flyer delivery and had spent $130 a person. Um, and so it's interesting to look at those direct comparisons um, and to see what's happening there. Let me give you another example. I've got a, a furniture store, an Amish furniture store that we did a flyer for um, just a few weeks ago here. They've got 10 sales that have come in so far, but again, their average sale may be several thousand dollars and their repeat numbers may be very high. So we look at all those things. Let me give you one more example, a fitness center. Um, on average, they may spend 30 to $50 a month, an average fitness center customer. Uh, that average customer may spend, uh, be there 12 to 15 months. So you're looking at maybe a $500 val you know, lifetime value uh, for that customer. And you need to look at the churn rate. So you know, with fitness centers, they're seeing people come, they're seeing people go. Um, some businesses, maybe if you're a furniture store, you may uh, be able to bring people in for a much longer period of time. So you have to determine uh, what the lifetime value is. There's other things. I mean, it's, it's very complicated, but 
some businesses have lots and lots of referrals so if you're in a business where you have a high referral rate obviously those 32 new customers that the landscape company got they may get 10 more off of referrals if they're in a very high referral based company so anyway I hope this helps you understand some of these different factors that that go into this and the bottom line is find marketing that works for you and gives you the highest level of return on investment